Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 29 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next is thalamus and hypothalamus. So thalamus and hypothalamus both are parts of the forebrain. So thalamus forms the side of the forebrain and hypothalamus forms the floor of the forebrain. So hypothalamus basically denotes the end of the forebrain. After that the midbrain starts. Thalamus does not secrete any hormones but hypothalamus secretes a lot of hormones and we will look at those hormones in the next lesson on endocrine system. You will see that hypothalamus is an important part of the endocrine system also. So hypothalamus acts as a link between the endocrine system and the nervous system. Thalamus, it receives and conducts nerve impulses for pain, touch, temperature, etc. Whereas hypothalamus, since it secretes hormones, it can, it can control different types of feelings like thirst, hunger, desire, temperature, sleep, etc. Cerebrum and cerebellum. Cerebrum is a part of the forebrain. Cerebellum is a part of the hindbrain. Very simple. Cerebrum is the seat of intelligence and cerebellum is the seat of equilibrium. So as I said, cerebellum tries to maintain the balance. But cerebrum is the place where your memory, intelligence, thought process, all those things are there. So they are very different in their functions. In cerebrum, if you look at its structure, it is divided into two cerebral hemispheres which are connected by a, a strip of nerve, nerve fibers called corpus callosum. Whereas in cerebellum, the two sides of the cerebellum are connected by pons. Pons is the, another part of the hindbrain. Let us look at question number four. Answer the following. Which part of the ear determines the pitch of a sound? Okay, so just to recap how the sound waves enter the ear. So if you look at it, the outer ear, it only helps to make the sound waves travel inside. What does the middle ear do? It also helps to uh, efficiently transmit the sound waves. So where exactly the sound waves are determined? Where do you have the auditory receptors? The auditory receptors are present in the inner ear. So inner ear is that part which determines the pitch of a sound. And that too, if you want to be more specific, you can say that the receptor cells or the hair cells which are present in the organ of corti in the cochlea. So you can say it is the inner ear or the cochlea, you can say in cochlea which cells the, uh, the hair cells in the hair cells in the organ of body. Let us look at the next question. Which part of the human brain is the most developed? The most developed part for the human brain, humans are, have, have the best ability to think and thinking is concentrated in which part? It is cerebrum. So cerebrum is the most developed part of the human brain. Which part of our central neural system acts as a master clock? Master clock, central nervous system. Central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord. So which out of these two is the master clock? It is brain. Because spinal cord is just like a backup of the brain, only for the reflex actions. But otherwise, brain is the one which controls everything that is happening inside our body. So brain is the master clock. Question number five. The region of the vertebrate eye where the optic nerve passes out of the retina is called the phobia, iris, blind spot or optic chasma. So which is that point from where the optic nerve passes out of the retina? So you have the optic nerves here. So optic nerve passes out of the retina from this point and this point is the blind spot. So blind spot would be the right answer. Let us look at question number six. Distinguish between afferent neurons and efferent neurons. Impulse conduction in a myelinated nerve fiber and unmyelinated nerve fiber. Aqueous humor and vitreous humor. Blind spot and yellow spot. So let us start with afferent and efferent neurons. Now whenever you have the term afferent, it means something which brings things inside. So it brings things inside and efferent means it takes away things out. So afferent neurons will carry the impulse
from the receptors inside the central nervous system. So it is basically coming from the sensory organs to the central nervous system. And efferent neurons, they are carrying, conducting the impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors because effectors are those which are actually going to produce the response. Now afferent neurons are sensory in nature because they are connected to the sensory organs and the efferent neurons are motor in nature because they are connected to the motor organs or the effectors. Afferent neurons provide stimulus to the CNS. So it, it brings things to the CNS. So that is the stimulus. And efferent neurons, it provides response from CNS. So it takes away the response from CNS and then sends it to the uh, effectors. Next is the impulse conduction in myelinated fiber and impulse conduction in non-myelinated fiber. As I said, in a myelinated fiber, the insulation is more, therefore the conduction is fast and therefore less energy is needed to conduct. So it is just the opposite in case of non-myelinated because it is non-myelinated, not complete insulation for the axon. So the conduction would be slow and therefore more energy would be needed. Aqueous humor and vitreous humor. So aqueous, the word aqua is related to water. So this is a watery fluid, whereas vitreous humor is a gel-like fluid. Now where is the aqueous humor present? Between cornea and the lens. So if this is the eye, let us suppose this is the eye. So this is the area where aqueous humor is present and this is the area where vitreous humor is present. Now what is the function of aqueous humor? It provides nourishment to other parts. But vitreous humor does not provide any nourishment. Then what is the purpose of vitreous humor? It retains the spherical shape of the eye. So it retains the spherical shape of the eyeball rather. So that is how they are different from each other. Finally, blind spot and yellow spot. So blind spot is that spot which does not have any photoreceptors and that is why it is called blind because the no photoreceptors are present. So light cannot be sensed at all. So this is the blind spot and yellow spot is just another name for fovea. Fovea is also known as yellow spot. Why is it called yellow spot? Because only the cones are present here. So the rods are not present here. So it has been given a name yellow spot. So here only cones are present, no rods are present. So blind spot is insensitive to light because there are no rods, no cones, nobody to receive light. Whereas uh, yellow spot is sensitive to bright light only. It is not sensitive to dim light because for dim light you need rods and rods are not there. Location wise blind spot is located at the point where the optic nerve originates. Whereas the yellow spot is located lateral to the blind spot. So this is the location of the yellow spot. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope this lesson on neural control and coordination would have helped you. However, our discussion on control and coordination is not yet complete. We will carry on our discussion on control and coordination in the next lesson with the endocrine system. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.